Is AMD planning to release Zen 6 Ryzen-based processors in the first half of 2027? Because there's a very interesting slide that the company have actually released at this point. And you can see that at the very least, Medusa is confirmed as the code name for the client platform. This of course will be at both desktop as well as laptop. Now this also adds a lot of credibility to many of the specifications that have been floating around for the next generation of Ryzen processors. Yup, that means 24 cores and 48 threads is looking a lot more likely. We'll touch more on that in just a moment, but I wanna focus just for a moment longer on this release date situation because they are stating that the first half of 2027 is when we're going to see open cell. Now, if you don't know what this actually is, you can essentially think of it as a replacement for a GISA. Yes, it's next generation firmware. It's designed to be a lot more customizable, a lot more secure, and a lot more powerful. AMD have spoken about this before, and again, in the OCP Global Summit, they've gone a lot more exhaustively into this. So if you're really geeky and want to learn about this, you should, of course, check out the video where it's discussed a lot more detail. But yeah, does this mean then that AMD will actually launch uh, Ryzen 10,000 or Zen 6 or whatever you want to say in 2027? There's a lot of stuff I have to say here, so let's just discuss it after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, for those of you who have not been keeping up with previous rumors, most leaks online and most murmurs have pointed to these processors launching in the late part of 2026. If I was to go back to this article here from WCCF Tech, which dates back to September, so just almost two months ago now, you can see that uh, Kepler L2 and also Adrock Thurston, who have got very good track records, uh, I will look again at the specifications more in just a moment, they are saying that the uh, production is going to start ramping up and therefore, yes, we will see these products almost certainly launching in 2026. But then if we go back to open cell again, yeah, first half of 2027. The last information that I had from my sources is that yes, AMD will be launching uh, Zen 6 for desktop in, well, the latter part of 2026. And that does also seem to be the release that, AM that Intel are targeting for its own next generation processors, also known as Nova Lake. So if AMD do not release their CPUs at this point, in theory anyway, we would see Intel potentially be having a pretty good advantage in the market. Now, there is one reason that we could say potentially that this could happen, or at the very least, there's some credibility. First of all, there's open cell, but again, one thing doesn't necessarily mean the other. For example, open cell could launch in, let's say, hypothetically, April or May time, but AMD could have already released Zen 6. So that could have happened, let's say, hypothetically, in November. And open cell, it doesn't necessarily mean that, what, although this is going to be on the AM5 platform, you have to remember that software and different revisions of BIOSes and different CPUs and so on, there's a lot of compatibility there. So it just might simply take them more time to make sure that, you know, this is compatible with that, this is compatible with that. And obviously you also have to have all of the motherboard vendors singing on the same hymn sheet. And that's to say nothing of the new platforms that are going to be releasing. And uh, yeah, obviously the fact that Zen 6 is going to be on the AM5 platform, basically what I'm saying is while none of this is you know, impossible, there are just a lot of moving pieces here that we do need to take into consideration. With that said, there are also a couple of, uh, well, there are a few things that are happening that could lend some credibility. The first of which is that we've seen so many rumors for this 
dual X3D, 9950X3D2, or whatever the hell AMD end up calling it. Personally, I'm really hoping it's not that name, <laughs> because, I mean, the name is terrible. Uh, I'll leave it to you to decide whether it's whether it's not terrible or, or great in the comments below. But, um, yeah, I suppose you could argue that that refresh might add a little credibility to AMD delaying the CPU. There's also the fact that TSMC's production at the moment is just getting hit on the head. Uh, we've also seen um, DDR5 uh, supply very heavily constrained as well. Prices are skyrocketing at the moment. So I'm not saying that you won't be able to buy DDR5, but all I'm going to say to you guys is if you see a good deal on DDR5 memory right now, is a probably the best time you're going to get the memory because I'm not, I'm not saying that, I, you know, this is 100%, but I don't see the prices going down anytime soon with what's going on in the market, unfortunately. With that said, I still believe that it's quite likely that we're going to see these processors launch in the later part of 2026. Um, with that said, we will have to wait and see. I would be very interested if AMD have made a decision against this. Now, I also just want to go over the specifications again. Um, so the main primary you know, headline for Zen 6 is certainly going to be those extra cores. 16 cores, 32 threads is what we've had from AMD for a long time now. And I think it was absolutely fantastic when they introduced this way back in Zen 2. Um, and again, like I've said a hundred times at this point, or thousand times, the chiplet-based nature and the CCDs that AMD introduced with Zen 2, and obviously that technology has something that has absolutely been one of the best bets I think any technology, any tech company has ever made. Like it was honestly such an amazing decision for AMD to go chiplets at that point. Um, and obviously, the rumor is that with the N2 process, AMD will be cranking this up to 12 cores per CCD. So this means that we have 24 cores, 48 threads total. In terms of total number of cores, this does mean that Arrow Lake, sorry, Nova Lake is still going to be ahead, 52 cores total. Um, although, from what we understand, the IOD for um, the next generation Ryzen might have a couple of low power cores. But either way, the bottom line is, AMD will have a thread disadvantage to Intel. However, obviously, you can make a very good argument that while well, all of those cores from AMD are going to be running at higher clock frequencies and better IPC because they don't have like the E cores essentially that uh, Intel will be spamming with Novalink. And there has been some rumors concerning the clock frequency. I personally don't believe it's going to hit uh, 7 gigahertz. I, I, I would love for it to. My personal prediction is low to mid six. Um, and by the way, I'm referring, obviously it's gonna depend on the number of cores and stuff like that that's being hit. And also things like yields. Te technically speaking, I think that, you know, you could overclock it and other bits and bobs, but I just don't think that, you know, the average customer facing CPU, AMD are gonna be putting out, you know, <laughs> the type, I don't think they're gonna basically say, you know what, you guys can have the best quality silicon. That's pretty much where I'm going with this. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, you did get the odd sample in AMD's labs that could hit seven gigahertz under really good conditions, but for the average processor, I don't, I just, I, I personally doubt it, but I would absolutely love to be proven wrong. Like I'm happy to take that L. 48 megabytes um, is the amount of cash. Um, this is almost certainly, of course, because L3 is just going to increase because naturally you have more cores and L3 is directly linked to that. As for memory speed, that is also going to be going up. I've heard it's around 8,000 MTS, still DDR5 memory, of course, and TDPs are also going to go up a little bit as well. As for IPC, I honestly don't know. There has been a lot of leaks with IPC, but it's always very difficult to know what is true and what isn't. I personally think that it's going to be around 10 to 15%. The bottom line is, though, these processes are going to be really, really performant because outside of, you know, extra clocks and all that crap, the bottom line is we're going to see a major improvement in the cache. It's going to be considerably less latency, particularly into core discussions. You know, so if, let's say CCD1 is trying to access something from uh, CCD0, then there's going to be a lot of less latency here. And I think Intel and AMD have had a lot of uh, weaknesses there. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting decisions actually for Zen 6. I'm very much looking forward to what AMD brings to the table here. 
Um, so yeah, I guess I guess that kind of uh, is pretty much the video. I think that's just about it for this particular video though. But what I do have is a request. Let's all be wrong. And in the comments below, make a prediction. What do you think AMD will actually be aiming for in terms of clock frequency targets for Zen 6? It's only a bit of fun, but I think it would be quite interesting. Do you think my prediction of, you know, low to mid 6 gigahertz is going to be accurate? Obviously, you know, do comment below. And also, what do you think the IPC gains are going to be? <laughs> we can all look back on it and let's say, oh, I don't know, around a year and say, well, <laughs> I was right. Well, nope, I was very much wrong. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.